Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the problem that .NET's support policy and versioning strategy has because I think we have a bit of a problem after so many years of this approach being out now and we have enough data collected to actually see what's going on and how people upgrade and not only that, I actually ask you what version you are using in production for .NET as well as why are you not upgrading .NET 9? Because tons of people said they don't want to update .NET 9. On top of that, I'm also going to talk about an option you will now have to have never-ending support for any .NET version, whether that's .NET Core 3.1, .NET Core 2, .NET 5, .NET 7, or any other version you might want to have supported forever. So just to recap, Microsoft is releasing a new .NET version every year and you have LTS versions and STS versions. The even numbers are LTS, so 8, 10, 12 and so on are supported for three years, while the odd numbers 7, 5, 9, like .NET 9 now, are supported for 18 months. This means that many companies now have policies that don't allow developers to upgrade to the latest version because that might be an STS version the same way that .NET 9 is now. Now, I want to make it clear that I was working at a company where we had thousands of .NET microservices and we were upgrading every time a new version was out because especially after .NET 5, it was really easy to upgrade those services and just immediately reap the benefits of the performance you gain by just changing a number. That being said, not every company has that policy and from what I noticed, many of you are not upgrading. So what I have in this poll is 12,000 people answering which .NET version are they using in production. And a whopping 18% said .NET Framework 4. something, or maybe it could be 3. something. And that is massive. That's one fifth of these 12,000 people using .NET Framework. Now, that is great because .NET Framework is stable. It works. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And it has indefinite support. So it will be supported until the sun explodes and kills us all. Now, .NET 9 has been out for maybe seven to 10 days of the time of recording this video. And we already have 7% of all these people upgraded to .NET 9, which is amazing, but we have 70% of everyone on .NET 8, which is understandable because it's too soon after the launch of .NET 9 to hop on the new version, so I understand that. And then you have a 5% using other versions. So here we have a .NET 6, for example, and migrating to 8 soon because it is LTS. So they're not migrating to STS, which is the latest and the greatest, because it's only supported for 18 months. And here's where my argument comes in. I think that releasing a new version every November is fine for me and C Sharp version. Yes, we get more features, whereas you get more things you have to learn, but I think that's a good sign of healthy community and I'm totally okay with it. But I would love if every single one of those versions was an LTS lasting three years. I believe Microsoft can do this and I don't think they have a good reason not to, because ultimately changing this to three years will just lead to more adoption. If you go through the comments, and I'm going to put links to those posts in the description down below if you want to check them out, you'll see so many people still on .NET 6 or .NET 8 because native AOT. Some people use mono runtime, so I'm sorry. And you have lots of .NET 8. Some even use .NET Core 3.1 and .NET 6. Both versions, by the way, not supported anymore. So in danger of not having official Microsoft support. If there's a security incident, it's not going to get updated. If there's a performance issue that's critical, it's not going to get updated. Now you can say it's been long enough and you're probably not going to have any issues like that, but you're out of support. You're building a castle on sand. If we go on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now, I ask you, what's the reason you're not upgrading to .NET 9? And the answers are pretty interesting. But before that, I want to let you know that our Black Friday sale is still live. And until the 2nd of December, you can use this discount code Black Friday 24 to get 40% off everything that is courses, that is bundles, or your first year of Dome Train Pro. Not only that, but we just launched a brand new course called Let's Build It URL Shortener in .NET, which is a massive 17 hour course teaching you everything you need to know to build and deploy in production a real URL shortener with a UI authentication and everything. It starts from system design, requirement design, building it, building pipelines, deployment, IAC with Terraform. We did everything with GI, and it's one of my favorite courses on the platform. So check in the description and use this kind code Black Friday 24 to get 40% off. So here my friend Fikret decided to say I'm a JavaScript developer. It's pretty funny, we play Call of Duty together, uh, but that's irrelevant. But if we focus on the real .NET responses is because we're not done with 6 or 8, and then between Angular, Node, .NET, and everything else, 
people are spending more time upgrading that buildings. That can be a real issue if you have multiple technologies and they just all get updated in the same year. You have to potentially run regression tests, smoke tests, acceptance tests, and this can be time consuming. So you end up having things that are literally not supported anymore. If you scroll down, the concept of LTS and STS versions in .NET is a deliberate strategy to balance innovation with stability and predictability, which I disagree with because this just says you assume that STS versions are unstable and they're just experiments, which they are not. If we go over here, you see what releases qualify for servicing and how updates are affected by servicing qualifications. Customers can choose between LTS or STS. The quality of all releases is the same. So there is no real evidence that says we're going to put this in an STS version and not an LTS version. We've seen features in preview both on STS versions and LTS versions. I do believe that Microsoft is rushing quite a bit and they drop out features or they just remove them last minute because they can't make the release date. And that is a problem in itself. But then you have so many people saying, hey, it's not LTS, I can't use it because I just finished upgrading these applications to aid. It's brutal, I have PTSD and in a few weeks at least. And that's understandable from framework to .NET 8. That's quite the jump. Then you have not LTS. Again, I'm going to put a link in the description if you want to check that out. But people are just not upgrading to the latest versions. Just say STS, we're not going to attach that. LTS, it's the thing. So it's not about the features, it's not about performance, it's just the support model. Locking out millions of .NET developers that could be using these versions just because the company has an LTS policy. You know, you have all these other people. Again, there's no point into going all the others, but again, LTS only. LTS, need client's approval. This and many, many more. It is really not that difficult if you're in .NET 8 to go to .NET 9. It's usually just upgrading the number of the version in the project and then the Docker image, and that's it. But, you know, they say migrate equals do something, and we have other things to do. Actually, someone is paying them. So, totally, totally understandable, which is why I'm saying Microsoft should just drop the LTS and STS model and just have a single LTS support for three years. Ultimately, if you go that far into the support, let's say 18 months, you can just migrate down all the support and service patches you might have from the higher versions to the lower ones. And actually, this is where the never-ending support model comes in, because yes, there will be a way very soon to have support for unsupported versions that never ends. Now, I was a bit skeptical in the beginning on this, so I actually reached out to a company that offers this model or will start offering this model and I had to chat with them. And after chatting with them, I'm happy to include them in this video because I think what they're doing and the people behind the company are great. Honestly, I had to chat with the CEO fully behind the guy. So a company called Hero Devs has this waitlist now to write down that they're interested in .NET never-ending support. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's exactly what it sounds like. Basically, if you scan the entire support policy of Microsoft, whatever Microsoft is offering as LTS or STS, so support patches, critical performance or critical bugs, they will actually just add them in any version you have and offer you a donor version that can be supported indefinitely. So if something arises and you're still in donor core 2.1 or 3.1 or 3 or whichever .NET version you are on, they will have a patched, fixed, performance improved version for you. Now, that is a paid offering, but if this is something you need for your company, they are claiming, and again, this can be rough around the edges because that's an approximation, but the claiming using this is 20 times cheaper than doing a tough migration to a new version that is supported from an unsupported one. Now, I can't speak of numbers because even though they gave me some rough numbers, they all depend on your company size and also how many developers commit code to those repos using those versions. That's actually exactly how they're priced their offerings and they have support for tons of other things. So it started with Angular, I'm pretty sure. You can add it to your code. You can get a custom quote. You can say how many developers are committing code here? Five, okay. Which version do you want supported? .NET 2.1. Yes, this is Angular, but you get the point. And you can say next step, you can email them and then their sales department will reach out and you can strike a deal with them. But based on the numbers I've heard and the companies that might need this, this is super, super affordable and a great thing to be added in the .NET ecosystem. Now, I partner with Hero Devs because I think the offering is great. David Fowler has also tweeted about this and he's very interested in this. So you can use the link in the description if you want and sign up for the waitlist 
the product will be out and offered in January 31st. At least that's the deadline I was given. And I have another deadline for when it will be actually out, but you can start actually you know, signing contracts and asking about versions and everything from the 31st and purchasing the product. So if your company needs this, use a link in the description and just sign up for it because I think this is great for .NET support. Now I asked them, what if Microsoft drops the LTS and STS model? And they said they would actually like it because ultimately what they want to do is support these older versions and everything becomes older eventually. So it doesn't really affect them anymore. And I strongly, strongly believe that Microsoft should drop the STS model and keep just the LTS. But now I want to know from you, leave a comment down below, let me know what do you think about the LTS and STS model and the yearly releases? I really, really want to know. And let's have a chat in the comment section. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.